I think it's fair to say there's one thing we all dread, it's selfish, noisy neighbours. So when newcomers move in and start disrupting an entire community, it's time for some group action. Which is exactly what the residents of a picturesque village in the West Midlands decided to do, when their peaceful lives were shattered by nightmare new neighbours, who arrived one sunny spring weekend. This is the start of my bank holiday, and this started at 9 o'clock this morning. Incessant, non-stop noise polluting. On average, it goes on 14 hours a day. The intolerable noise was being caused by travellers who had recently bought the land, which is Greenbelt. They were trying to develop it into a residential site and commercial scrapyard. It was a massive shock to the local villagers. To find suddenly one Bank Holiday Friday that that tranquility, that amenity is literally being devastated and smashed by bulldozers, earth moving vehicles is hugely traumatic, not just for me, but for many hundreds of residents locally. Not only was the noise traumatic for the villagers, being Greenbelt land, the travellers did not have permission to develop it. Greenbelt areas are protected as open spaces and although agricultural buildings can be built on them, it's rare to be granted a change of use to building residential or commercial properties. But that didn't seem to stop the travellers at Meriden. Within about three hours, it became something that looked like a battlefield from the Battle of the Somme. There were people standing by the fences. Some people were crying, some people were angry, some people were in disbelief. I couldn't understand it. I shed a lot of tears in the beginning. I really did, because it was like your whole world had been turned upside down. There used to be an agricultural barn here. It leads onto a greenfield site here. This area was covered in refuse and all sorts of debris. And you can see that this area was used as an access point onto the main traveller site there. So there was almost daily conflict between us and the travellers uh, going on and off the site at all hours, with scrap metal vehicles, lorries, 4 by 4s And whenever they saw us in the driveway, There'd be one finger salutes, there'd be verbal and visual abuse, and they would park across the gate filming us, uh, trying to harass us and intimidate us. But the residents weren't prepared to take this noisy invasion into their lives quietly. They formed an action group, Meriden Residents Against Inappropriate Development, or RAID, led by David. This is where the, uh, the residence protest site was. We had a, um, a brazier there, some flimsy awning over there, and this was maintained on a 24-hour basis for three years. I've been involved since day one, uh, doing four-hour shifts every weekend, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and whenever anyone couldn't make it, I'd fill in. Minus 12, we've sat there with a the brazier at night, just monitoring the site, making sure the work, no work's carried out. The residents created a successful human blockade to stop lorries delivering tons of hardcore to develop the site. The travellers applied for retrospective planning permission to develop the site, but were refused, and the villagers seemed to bear the brunt of the travellers' frustration. You couldn't even walk down the lane. You couldn't, without being abused or run off the road or you know, the two-finger salute, all that sort of business. You had to put up with all that, which we did. You know, it was quite dignified. Every time we came out the gate, we got abuse, try and run you over. It was just all the time, something happening all the time. To circumvent the planning process by sending in bulldozers and barristers first, and then afterwards setting and submitting your planning application is not the way to go forward. It's not the way to do development. It was about planning and developing on a piece of greenbelt land. If anybody could come along and just buy an agricultural field and, and start developing it into accommodation, um, not right. It's not right. You've got anarchy. When the travellers saw that the residents were maintaining the grass verge, as I've always done for 30 years, they would target this area of grass verge. The first time they churned it all up, I came out, cleaned it all up, then I went out and they'd come back and they'd done it all again. 
So anyway, we left it for a bit and cleaned all the wall down and my husband sort of tidied it all up. And then I think it's about a month later, he came up right onto the top, went onto the road, reversed back and spun his wheels. Now this time I got it all over my windows, all over my patio. And I, I got to the stage and thought, this is not funny anymore, is it? So anyway, the police came along, had a word with him, put the cones down. If he damages the cones, then it's police property. It's petty antisocial behaviour, but deeply upsetting to residents who, who just do what good citizens do, which is look after the patch outside their house. Far from being intimidated by the travellers' bullying behaviour, the residents were determined to fight the good fight against the illegal development of precious Greenbelt land, no matter what it took. Over the next three years, we've fought 20 legal planning and technical decisions to prove that it's an inappropriate development and it shouldn't have been allowed. That's cost £90,000 of the community's money. It's taken three years of 24-hour protesting. It's involved visits to Westminster, the European Parliament, the Council and the High Courts, all to protect what we cherish. The travellers lost every appeal until finally, after over 1,000 days of the residents' protest, Birmingham High Court refused the final appeal. And within a month, the travellers had left the site and the villagers were quietly victorious. People might think that we were triumphant on the day that they left, but that's not the feeling at all. It's just a feeling of immense relief. We fought hard and long. Uh, over it, you know, we've done it. The land will be restored to what it was before they come and actually made a mess of it. We hope now that they'll make a proper job of reinstating it. When you live in a community, sometimes you don't realise how good the community is until something happens like that, and then suddenly people get together and, and fight it. I didn't know none of these people, and they're all my friends. But now we've got, we're mates for life, a lot of us, yeah. you know, aren't we? Yep. <laughs> yes, we are. This campaign and this issue, this devastation has woken a sleeping giant, really, in this part of Middle England.